good to see you and I'm glad that we can have the Sunday school lesson now and I'm looking forward to when we can soon have it together in church again but for now uh, we're gonna do it on a video so uh, we're gonna start today with a song my God is so big. I think you all know this one. And so I hope you can do the actions with me. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. And then we're going to sing another song, Jesus Loves Me. So I think you all know that one. If you do, sing it along with me and do the actions as well. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right, so now we're going to go into our story. So if you have your Bibles, maybe you can go and get your Bibles if you don't have them right there. And if you have your Bibles, you can read along with me in John chapter 9. So we'll turn to John chapter 9. Just before we start the story, I'm going to tell you a little bit what it's about. So it's about a blind man. Have you ever been in a really dark place or had a blindfold over your eyes, maybe for a game or something, and you couldn't see anything, could you? And it was just all dark and it was just black. That's how it is for people that are blind. They can't see anything. They, they just have to like feel around or have someone guide them or tell them what it is. And so our story is about a blind man. And uh, so in John chapter 9, verses 1 to 15 is the most part of our story. And so it starts in verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So we're going to have some figures here. So we've got Jesus coming along. And he sees a man sitting here. And you know what this man's doing with his hand out like that? He's begging for money or for food or anything that someone would give him because he's blind. And so he can't work or do other things to make money. And so he's sitting here. And so along comes Jesus and all his disciples. Come along. Oh, and they're going along here. And so the disciples ask him, and we'll look in verse 2 as his disciples ask him. He said, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said to them, Jesus telling his disciples, not this man or his parents sin isn't the reason why he's blind. But it says in verse 3 there, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So this man was blind so that Jesus could heal him and God could get the glory from that. And so then in verse 6, we see Jesus uh, saying, uh, when he had thus spoken, so when he told his disciples that answer, he said, and he spat on the ground and made clay out of his spit and the dirt on the ground. And that might seem a little gross, but that's what 
happened, it says right here in verse 6, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man, so he put that mud and that spit and stuff on his eyes. And so we're having another picture here. So here Jesus is putting that on his eyes. And then he tells the man in verse 7, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he told him to go wash. So the man goes off and washes. And Jesus and his disciples are still here. And guess what happens? He comes back seeing. It says in the end of verse 7, He went his way therefore, so he went and did what Jesus told him to do. And he went and washed and came seeing. So now he can see and he looks very happy and his eyes are open. And so he is very thankful that he can see. And so then Jesus and his disciples go on their way. And... So this man goes on his way too and he's very excited and so his friends and neighbors are here and they are wondering what happened to this man and so they then verse 8 it says the neighbors therefore and they which had seen him which was blind said is this sorry let's read this again is not this he that sat and begged so they're like is this even the same guy that we saw begging before is this he and some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. So he's like, I am the same one. I'm the same one. And so they said to him uh, in verse 10, how were thine eyes open? Like, how did that happen that he got that he can see? And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. And he said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And they're asking, like, Where did Jesus go, the person that healed you? And he said, I know not. And then these ones brought him to the Pharisees. So these are the Pharisees here. So they brought him to the Pharisees. And... Uh, the Pharisees weren't very happy about this. And so uh, the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them the same thing, that Jesus had put clay on his eyes and told him to wash, and he washed, and he could see. And uh, therefore some of the Pharisees were just not happy about that. And they were saying unto him, um, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? And he said in verse 25 um because he didn't know all the answers to all the questions that these men were asking him but there's one thing that he said he did know and that was in verse 25 one thing i know that whereas i was blind now i see and so he knew that jesus had healed him and he was sharing that with these people and so there's a couple lessons that we can learn from the story one lesson is that jesus can heal people. He healed the blind man and he can do anything like what we uh, sang in our song. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And the second lesson that we can learn is that this man was not ashamed to tell other people about what Jesus had done for him. He was telling his friends and neighbors, these Pharisees, even if they didn't want to hear it, he still told them what Jesus had done for him. And uh, in a nice, kind way, he just told them that Jesus had healed them. And so that's the same thing we can do to our friends and neighbors and other people. We can tell them about what Jesus has done for us. And that is a really good thing to do. And so now we are going to um, do our Bible verse. So this is our Bible verse. Uh, you won't be able to say it to me right now. But you can learn it, and maybe once we're back in church, maybe you can say it for us then. So this is our Bible verse for this week. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. And this is a really good verse because this is why we would tell people about Jesus, because we love him. And the reason why we love him is because he first loved us and sent his son to die for us on the cross. And so... We'll say this verse again a few more times. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. 
I'm just going to set it up here if I can and do some actions for it. I think that that always helps me to learn it. There we go. So we love him because he first loved us. First John 4 verse 19. Let's say it again. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, verse 19. Maybe we'll say it again a little bit later. So now we have another song we can do. It's called He's Able. If you know the song, you can sing it with me. If you don't, maybe you can learn it. So, He's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He healed the broken hearted and he set the captive free. He made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see. peek -a he's able. He's able, I know he is able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. And now we're going to go into another little story that we have, and that's about a little girl and her dad. And the story that we had before was about the blind man, and the blind man was a missionary because he told other people about Jesus. That's what being a missionary means, telling other people about Jesus. And so this is our story. It's called, Who Can Be a Missionary? Emily was sitting on her daddy's lap. So this is Emily sitting on her daddy's lap. He was reading her Sunday school paper to her. Emily thought about the picture of Jesus putting mud on the eyes of the blind man. The man who was blind could see. His eyes could see red daddy. How wonderful, thought Emily. Now Daddy was reading the part about the leaders asking the man questions. She liked it when the blind man said, One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. That man was a very good missionary, said Daddy to Emily when he was through reading. Emily looked at him in surprise. How could he be a missionary, Daddy? She asked. Do you remember what a missionary is? Daddy asked her. Uh-huh. A missionary is someone who tells people about Jesus. Right, said Daddy. And the man who had been blind only knew one thing about Jesus, but he told that one thing that he knew. I thought missionaries knew lots of things about Jesus, said Emily. Daddy laughed. Most of them do, he said, and because they love Jesus, they want to tell people about him. Do you remember the verse you learned in Sunday school? Emily and Daddy said together, we love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. Is that why you and mommy talk about Jesus to other people? Asked Emily. Right again, smiled daddy. We love Jesus and we want other people to love him too. Oh, I, uh, oh, and then daddy said, how about you? And Emily said, oh, I do too. Good, said daddy, giving her a hug. Will be a family of missionaries. So let's think about the story. What story was Daddy reading to Emily? About the story of Jesus healing the blind man. How was the healed man a missionary? He told other people about what Jesus had done for him. What will we do if we really love Jesus? We'll tell other people about Jesus too. So that's the end of this story that we have. And so now we have a craft. So you should have gotten a paper with a couple people, the boy and a girl. This is just the girl one, but there's a boy one as well on it, as well as a paper bag like this. And so the first thing you can do is color their hair and maybe their face if you want to. So uh, you can color the boy and the girl and whatever color of hair you want them to have, you can color it. And then you can ask your parents if you need help to cut out 
them. And so I'm just going to do one of them to show you how this craft works. Okay, so we're going to cut it out. So make sure if you need help that you ask. And maybe your mom or dad can help you. So just cut out this. I hope you enjoy this crap. What we're gonna make is a puppet that can talk like it's supposed to be like how we can talk and tell people about Jesus. So we can make this puppet. So I think puppets are really cool. So we're just gonna cut this out. And you can color it first or you can color it after, whichever but first will probably work better. I'm gonna be done. Maybe you're gonna cut it out faster than me. We'll see. <laughs> so, here we go. Alright, so now we've got our puppet cut out. So then, you can ask your mom and dad if you have some glue. So a glue stick would work good. I've just got a glue stick here. So we're going to stick her face onto this flat part here. So then we're going to stick it on there and then we're going to glue this part underneath like that. Okay. So I'm just going to put some glue on here. I'm not sure if you can see me putting it on, but I'm just going to put some glue on. Here we go, I've got some glue on there. So I'm just gonna stick her face on here like this. Oh, didn't get her face. That's right. okay. There she is. And then I'm gonna stick this part under here like that. So I'm gonna put some glue on the back of this. Hope you enjoy doing this craft. I think it's a nice thing. So here, I'm gonna put stick this on and make so line it up with the top part of her mouth. And stick it on like that. Alright, so then we've got our puppet, so you can put your hand inside and go like this. And then you can talk, you can say, Hi, how are you? I want to tell you about Jesus. And so there's our craft. And so you can do the other one as well. You can do two of them. So I should have the uh, a girl and a boy and two paper bags. And I hope you enjoyed making them. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I want you to know that I'm thinking about each of you. I'm praying for you and look forward to hope seeing you again soon and I just want to uh, close with prayer here now for our lesson dear Heavenly Father I just thank you for each of these boys and girls Lord I pray that you would be with them pray that you would help them encourage them keep them safe and healthy help them to love you and stay close to you and I pray that this lesson would be a blessing to them that they would have fun doing it and just thank you for each of them. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you very much for watching this video. And I just uh, pray that you have a great week and a great day.